everybody. Welcome back, all gentle folk, gentle beasts, and all creatures in between, to Let's Play Morrowind with me, Traverse in the Dark, and Carla the Cam. Where we last left off, uh, we had taken down the Shrine of Ulanubai, but problem, corpus disease. The divine disease that is apparently uncurable that Dagoth Gerez, the priest of Ulanubai, ended up cursing us with. We have to go back to Caius and see if he can help us out. Most people are not going to be willing to speak to us if we have Corpus, or at least they're going to be pretty abrasive about you it. Need something. Get away from me, you've got Corpus disease, you can't get good at Corpus. Get away! Even Esther Dallin, our old friend, isn't happy with us. Now, curing Corpus disease is going to entail a quest in itself. And we really want to get cured of it as quickly as we possibly can, even our good friend Rannis. You've got Corpus Disease Outlander, that's a death sentence, it can't get cured. Get away from me, far away. Hmm. I'm very happy to make Thanks. However, while we're here in Balmora, I'm going to walk up to some unfriendly people. This diseased cripple, and I'm going to get some training from them. Because... I'm listening. What I haven't really done much is train heavy armor, and considering that both the fists of Ratagulf are Randagulf rather are heavy armor, I might as well train heavy armor because it's cheap to do so, and it'll increase my armor rating because these are pretty beefy. See, armor rating thirty already. Oops, that's armor air. These are pretty beefy gauntlets, so I should be getting the appropriate skill trained to make use of them. And this also means that next level up. We will have a lot of points in Endurance, which means that we can train our armor skills more. I think I'll do the same with Light Armor, since we're using a Glass Tower Shield, just because I love it. Our case of Corpus is worsened. Forgot about that. But I guess it does show you kind of what's going on. So it says there that it is continuously draining our attributes. You can see our speed and personality have gotten less and less. Uh, but look at that, Fist of Ratigov now 66 armor rating. Altogether our armor rating is 51, which is pretty decent. We do need to get our case of Corpus cured though. No shrines can cure it. The only thing that can is by finding someone who is learned enough in diseases to know how to cure us. Caius will be the one to know. Been a while. I'm, he's far away to request us to speak. There seems to be a darkness over the land. Those clouds are foreboding. Caius, Elias. Disgusting. I think you should leave before I lose my lunch. Always a pleasure, Caius. With Dagoff Ger is dead, the Six House Shrine is no longer a threat. You've more than earned a promotion to the rank of Traveller, Traverser. I'm very worried that you have Corpus disease. It doesn't sound like it, but I have some good news in that department. I canvassed my informants for possible treatments just in case you contracted the disease during your mission. Oh, I learned from Fast Eddie that your best chance of getting cured is Devaya Fur, an ancient Telvanni wizard who runs a corpusarium for victims of the disease. Here, take this Dwemer artifact and 1000 drakes, thank you. Go to Telfur. Devaya Fur will like the Dwemer artifact. A gift may sweeten his disposition. The gold is for expenses. And here's a couple of levitation potions. I hear you need them in Telvanni Towers because wizards don't use stairs. True. So get moving, get that corpus disease cured, then hurry back. I think I know how to get the Lost Prophecies Nibani, Nibani Mesa asked for. The temple sends victims of corpus disease to the Corpusarium. The Corpusarium is beneath Telfer, the tower of the Telvanni wizard Deviafer. Hmm. I asked Fast Eddie what it was like. It's a swell place full of doomed crazy people with bloated bodies. You'll love it. Fast Eddie. Ed Fem and also Fast Eddie, Eddie the Rat, is a rare commodity. A former Telvanni wizard who has gone Imperial and joined the Mages Guild. Ah, so that's why he's such a good resource for us in the Blades. A colourful but unreliable character, eh, but he is an invaluable source of inside information on Great House Telvanni. He has a small house here in Balmora. We've seen some of the Telvanni lands. I do plan to join Telvanni, maybe this would be a good time to get in touch with them. House Telvanni is one of the three Dunmer great houses in Varnfell. Their nobles are thousand-year-old wizards. 
Telvanni are supposed to hate politics, foreigners and just about everything else, but the Vardenfeld Telvanni are apparently more ambitious and adventurous than most. I don't know much about them, but they do hire Western mercenaries, and some even rise to higher ranks. Talk to Telvanni councillors if you want to become a Telvanni retainer. Right, first things first though, we need to get to Telfer. Cure our corpus disease by speaking to this ancient Telvanni wizard. Sweeten his disposition with a Dwemer artifact, which tells us that he must have some connection to the Dwemer. Or he must like dwarven ruins just like Edwina did. Because of that, I think we can infer that he might be the person who can use our translation book and the books that we've gotten from our adventures in the dwarven ruins. The dwarven ruins that Edwina Elbert sent us on quest into. So before I actually go to Sadrif Mora to speak to, uh, get to Telfer and speak to Devayath, I want to get these books. Because we technically still have a quest from the Archmagister of the Mages Guild to find out what happened to the dwarves. What happened to them? Why did they disappear at the battle for Red Mountain? Unlocking that mystery will help us solve the mystery of the Sixth House Two. Where am I going? I'll run. I'm looking for my books that I got from my Ruin Adventures. Not in there. In fact, I have to sell that stuff. I totally forgot to. Not that. Egg of Time and the other one should be here too. Divine Metaphysics. Still have no idea what this statue is all about. And Egg of Time. Where is it? Hang Gardens is our translation book. Egg of Time. No idea what this all relates to. Hammer, knife, heart. Person. They go into the heart, person go away. Nope. Oh, in fact, I can actually sell that to someone downstairs. Which I will do. I have a lot of scrolls. It might be worth another visit to our old good friend Merchant Mudcrab. Merchant Mudcrab. Hello. I will sell her a few things. I could sell her that for her full gold. Diamond she doesn't want. So many scrolls that I don't need. I'll sell them just to get them off my inventory. They're taking up nothing but inventory space. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that, I don't think. Don't need them. I cast that spell. There you go. Cool. A little bit of extra gold in our bag. You know, I almost forgot I had the Amulet of Shadows. I should remember to use it again. We could have technically ran through all of Illinubai undetected, but I don't want to do that. That's boring. You want to see some gameplay and some bashy bashing and some shooty shooting from Carla? See some gameplay. Now she's actually an armored mage, remember? The armor that we've got under here packs a punch. Take me to Sadrif Mora. I don't really need any of this. Do you need something? No. And then we'll get to the boat, which should take us out of here. And towards Telfer. I am intrigued by that Dwemer Ruin over there, I have to say. It's Tamri Rebuilt content. I know that I'm keeping myself away from that just now, but I am increasingly getting interested in that over there. I've also been thinking about uh, just general playthroughs. I've been enjoying doing this Let's Play in the channel. And I'm also thinking about, you know, is there other games apart from Morrowind that I might want to look at critically and then maybe start Let's Playing? Because I've also said, and some of you have seen this, that I do love strategy games, particularly turn-based strategy. Right now there's some excellent examples out there. There's Age of Wonders 4, the fourth entry in the fantastic, tactically rich Age of Wonders series. Armies, tactical combat, turn-based. 4X, kind of like Civilization, but more focus on the battle element. I do love it. 
There's also this game I'm playing right now called War Tales, which is a kind of mercenary turn-based sim. You control a party of mercenaries in a low magic world and you build them up like a party of adventurers but also recruit new people and explore the world and try and get increasingly more dangerous contacts, contracts. It's a very interesting game and it's something that I might be interested in looking through if people would like to see some strategy gaming. People say real-time strategy is dead as a genre. I disagree. I think that real-time strategy and turn-based strategy are still reading their heads, particularly in the indie scene. Maybe not in AAA, but I mean, you know, look at games that are AAA right now. Check out for Spoken and the absolute travesty that that was of a release. Even Cyberpunk going back to then. AAA studios are not where it's at no more, guys. No crumbs, no. Indie studios are absolutely phenomenal in what they do. And I'm not just saying that to be a contrarian, I promise you. You know what, I should rest just for pure visibility. Oh, hey big guy. Hi you, hiya. There we go. A bit of stave bashing. Bound mace, basic flight. Is that tail far over there? It looks like it. So there's some interesting things about Telfer for anyone that's never seen it before. We'll go over them, but one of them is that just outside of it, the Morrowind patch project has actually fixed something that's not in Morrowind. In base game vanilla Morrowind, there is no master trainer of medium armor. However, the Morrowind patch project addresses this by adding them and they just stay in a random boat in Telfer. Why they're there, nobody knows, but they just thought, hey, we'll put them somewhere because I think it's the only skill trainer in Morrowind, the only skill medium armor that you cannot speak to someone to train up to 100. And it's just a pure developer oversight. Bethesda put out a bunch of different patches, two expansions, unofficial expansions. By the way, the helmet that we're wearing, the Adamantime helm, is actually one of those ex official expansions. Just that one dungeon in that helmet, which also is medium armor. So they understood that, you know, medium armor was kind of a skill that was overlooked in the game. You'll see even in the Tribunal expansion, and to a lesser extent Bloodman, they give players much more options for medium armor. So yeah, they put a trainer in here just for that. We might use them. Might not. I'm not really concerned about using trainers to get my skills to level 100. Not too fussed about that. We're interested in just playing through the game. And generally for skill and trainer increases, it'll be for more effective ways to progress through the guilds. Our, ma our destruction being 67 means we can progress to the next few mages guild quests, which I think I'll do after this point in the main quest, after we've cured ourselves of Corpus. Telfer. Onyx Hall. Now we're able to walk about with impunity here and... Beatifer. Are you here to plunder the dungeon? Have you got Corpus disease? Did you want to talk to Deveifer? I get Corpus. Everyone who gets Corpus comes to our Corpusarium. It's not very pleasant, but at least they're all fed and cared for. So it's a bit of a humanitarian effort, but as you'll see, Devaya Fur as a 10,000 year old wizard also has some other motives. You'd be surprised how many people come in here trying to steal Lord Fur's treasures. He does have quite a collection of relics and artifacts, but he keeps them down in the Corpusarium. And who wants to risk catching Corpus disease? Not to mention, who wants to get ripped in half? Pity. We don't see many good thieves here, just the stupid ones. Carla ain't too interested in that. She wants battle more than fevery. Devaya Fur is up above in his study. I hope you can fly. Pfft, no issue. You can't get up there unless you can fly out of potions. Sorry. That's such a non-sorry. Alright, Betty. We can assume that's one of his servants. Let's assume that until we're told otherwise. Deltifer. My name is Deltifer. Did you want to see Deviafer? 
If you get Corpus Disease, you quest and the hero looking to plunge of the dungeon. This is not the Corpusarium, it's in the caverns down below the tower. Just keep going down, you want to speak to Upsifer or Vishikai. They attend to the needs of the Corpusarium inmates, victims of the Corpus Disease. If you go down there, be careful. Many Corpus victims are completely mad and quite violent. I, yeah, I'm aware. Um, he's in his study, he won't mind being disturbed, we get a few visitors, just make sure you can levitate. Walk around looking up, you can see a shaft above you, levitate up the sat shaft, look for Lord Fur. Okay, cool. I shall do this. Tower of Telfer, Hall of Fur. Okay, now all I'm gonna say is this is all unguarded and Carla is gonna take a take. I know I said she wasn't a thief, but I mean a nice robe's a nice robe. A nice robe's a nice robe, guys. Hey. Nice robe's a nice robe, guys. Okay. Nice robe's a nice robe. And plus, he's kind of goading people into stealing from him anyway. Carla just misinterpreted the dungeon. She's just like, oh, I, I thought that this was all the dungeon. Oh, goodness. Oh, silly me. Oh, well, I'll just keep my stuff here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Plus, Carla doesn't like stealing from her friends in the Mages Guild and stuff, but this is an evil wizard. Well, she assumes he's evil. Servant skull. That doesn't bode well for the girls downstairs. Small chest. What have we got? On Ducey. Caduce. And let's telekinesis. Uh oh. See, somehow I don't think that's working as intended. I don't think that telekinesis trick is working as intended for some reason. Hmm. Me thinks that I've been bamboozled and that trick actually doesn't really work. But I'll get that to increase my alteration skill. Hey, yeah. Ooh. Hello, chest of drawers. Ooh. Listen, guys, listen, 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 L listen. It's a closet lock level 100 and it's trapped, and there's two evil looking candles. I mean, get, listen, hey, hey. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to come back here. I mean, you, you, you have to. There's no one here to see it. Look, it's, it's, it's dying to be stolen, whatever's in here. I'm marking, I'm marking. Marker. I'm marking. Oh, hi, Alfie Fur. Quick, Outlander. I wasn't doing anything. Have you come to speak to him? Yes, he's always busy. Sure. There he is, wearing this full Deirdrick armor. Now, you will come to see that Deviafer is kind of widely accepted as the Chad of Morrowind, and that he's the one person in the game that's getting everything that he wants and is also just doesn't really care that much about anything apart from his studies. And he looks pretty swollen, that Deirdrick armor. Carla is fighting Fighting the desire to absolutely try and annihilate him and take that armor from him, but I won't do it. Deirdre Carmen Morrowind, of course, just like in any any Elder Scrolls game, is the best armor you can get. Hello, Device. Say, that's an interesting Dwemer piece you have there. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the girls, Device. What can you tell me about it? I will offer it to him as a gift. A gift for me? How thoughtful and shrewd. I suppose you know I am a collector. And that such a gift is bound to please me. I congratulate you on your diplomatic skills. So, why have you tried to butter me up? Come to consult the great Divine Fur? You have the divine disease, want to plunder the dungeon, or leer at my daughters? Huh. Not bad for something born in a jar, eh? 
charming and talented, not daughters really, a little project, a side benefit of my researches into corpus disease, made them myself from my own flesh. Nice, aren't they? <sighs> yeah. Sha. Quite a comfort to me in my old age. Haha. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is Deveyuf. Those aren't just his servants. There is cloned daughters who wait on him hand and foot. Carla is feeling less and less bad about stealing from this man. Right. The sharpest of my girls in wit and tongue gets in my nerves sometimes, but conflict is the spice of like You can ask him about them and kind of what purpose they serve. Upsy's the one that we haven't met. She's the girl with the biggest heart. She takes care of the inmates of the Corpusarium and helps with my researches. Eager to please and be pleased better. Look, Morrowind had a PG, like, it was like an 11 plus rating. Stuff like this got through, and by the way, there's worse stuff than this in the game that also got through. Okay, um, I have got Corpus, I'm afraid. How interesting. Did you know that Corpus makes you immune to disease? Have you ever, well you don't, if you they get the best one, why would you need others? Have you heard of the prophecies of the Nerevereen? Ashlanders say the Nerevereen will be immune to disease. I've always thought, maybe I have the Nerevereen down in my Corpusarium and I don't even know it. Haha. <laughs> The Nerevereen is a fat, disgusting corpus monster and mad as a marsh rat. Wouldn't that be funny? He's quite insane. I'm going to tell him I might be the one. That's a fascinating story you tell. So, you might be the Nerevereen. Means nothing, of course. Corpus victims have all sorts of delusions, but let me think. I've got a potion. In theory, it should cure corpus. Doesn't work, though. Probably kill you. Killed all my test subjects. But you've got nothing to lose. He really is just that scientist that is okay with, like, ex human experimentation as long as you learn something from it. He is that character. You ever seen Made in Abyss? He's Bond through the novel. If you have, please comment, because I love Made in Abyss. I'll talk about it for ages. Uh, before I give it to you, I want to look around uh, below the Corpusarium. Know what's in store if you don't take the potion. And while you're there, I want you to pick up a pair of boots from a victim who calls himself... Yagram Bagarn, my oldest patient. Handy fellow, fix these things for me. Bring the boots back, and then you can have the potion. What do you know about the books that I've got? Yagram Bagarn might be able to tell you more. It's an interesting work. Okay. Thank you for your gift. When you live for thousands of years, you need a hobby. Something you love always sparks your interest. I collect treasures and invite thieves to steal them. I'm a collector and a sportsman. I collect enchanted items and ancient artifacts. I have quite a few Dwemer pieces, and as a sportsman, I love letting thieves try to steal my well-guarded treasures. Only a few rules. One, don't hurt the inmates. Two, don't hurt my daughters. My warden and guards can look out for themselves. If you want to try, you're free to do so. Here's a little hint. The first key is in my table. You can take it, but after that, you're on your own. If you actually manage to find my greatest treasure, return to me, and I shall return it to its former glory. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I'll give it a bash. Maybe we'll plunder the Corpusarium. Maybe I will. Uh, warden. Vishikai the Argonian is my warden of the Corpusarium. Quite the fighter. Tough as nails, self-taught. He even speaks like a scientist, very logical, short, laconic sentences. Works out with my daughters, who are no slouches at the martial arts themselves. Vishvakai was one of the last of my slaves. Freed him, and he wouldn't leave. Kept him on as a hireling, then made him my partner. See, a, a bit of moral grey area with him. Yes, he had slaves. He freed him, slave wanted to stay, so he's like, Alright, be my partner. Excellent fellow, fine companion. Not an intellectual, you understand, but good company for me and my daughters. The fact that a, a, a Telvanni inclined mage is actually saying this about an Argonian is like, way more progressive than anyone else in that house is. Interesting. I'm going to save you, save. He said that we can take this key. He was not lying. Get the boots, no boots, no potion. Okay. Right, to the Corpusarium we go. Ow. To meet this Yagumbagan, who might know about these dwarven books and obviously you know this potion might actually cure us 
But of course, as usual, we need to run a little errand. Yeah, this isn't spooky at all. You'll be the Shikai. I don't know why you're not wearing pants, but okay. I am Vishvakai, Warden of the Corpusarium. I'm here to warn you, do not harm the inmates. If you come to plunder the dungeon, you must endure their attacks and take your chances with me, their Warden and Protector. So there's rules to trying to plunder the dungeon. For his own amusement, Devaya Fur permits thieves to test their skills by attempting to steal the treasures he keeps below in the Corpusarium. The dangers are fearful, the inmates are savage and they carry the most terrible disease on Tamriel. The treasures themselves are guarded by traps and terrors and the guards, myself chief among them, will take great delight in trying to kill you. Those are the rules, abide by them, or leave. I mean, all I'm saying is I don't know what weapon he's packing, but that's just nothing but steel curious and, and gauntlets. He's even face palming already. I must endure their attacks, eh? Do not harm the inmates, I will not tolerate you adding to their suffering. Indeed. They are brutal and ferocious, they'll kill you if they can, but you are their guests, you may not harm them, or you will answer to me. Remember how I talked about I hadn't used the Amulet of Shadows for a while? I think this might just be the perfect opportunity. I'm the guardian and peacekeeper of the Corpusarium. I've spent long years in service to Lord Fur, first as a slave, then as a free hireling, and now as a friend and a partner. Wow. He has been kind and generous to me, although he does not provide me with pants, and I take his interests and the interests of those he shelters to heart. The treasures of this dungeon are open to sport, according to Lord Fur's whim, and you're welcome to try to steal them, but I, too, find great sport in hunting thieves. Hope he doesn't hunt me. He must be a knight, because he's telling us about another knight in Morrowind that he knows. When people do that, it tends to be people that they've learned from, and they're telling you that, see, in a night, he's a knight in the West, you need a horse, blah, 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 to be a knight. Uh, they tend to tell you about people that they've learned from. The ideal knight is an orc named Dumbrak Gobolak. Serves with the Legion under Dino Dias up in Nisus. Yeah, so we can learn knightly stuff from him. I may actually try plundering the dungeon. I don't see why not. But first, let me get cured of Corpus. Because I may have to rest a few times. Core Presarium Bowels. <sighs> this guy, look at this. This is someone in the end stages of Corpus, look at that. So creepy. How it's totally just mutated the skin and, and he's burst out into boils. It looks like something out of Left for Dead. Like an actual 28 Days Later zombie type movie or apocalyptic scenario. They move slowly, but I tell you, they have a lot of strength in them, these guys. This is what the game's trying to show you. These are the results from Corpus being left unchecked. We'll end up like that if we keep going this way. Although I'll tell you, we will be fighting these guys eventually, and Corpus does not make them weaker. Quite the opposite. Heavy door chest locked. Right, before I come back here, I need to make an open spell for 100 points. That's my aim. And if my alteration's not good enough, I've got to train it until it is. I should be able to do that, and once I've done that, there will be no lock in this game that is barred to me anymore. And then we'll come back and plunder the dungeon. Some more lame corpus over here. And a random corpus stalker just walking about in pain. Come. So sad. Again, the kind of thing that freaks you out when you're a kid playing this game. And here. <laughs> here we have Upsifer. Who doesn't like me very much. And we have our. Seizure inducing Yagumbagarn. He himself has corpus, but uh, yeah, I, it's best that we talk to him. He's also suspending this little device. He's kind of Jabba the Hutt, but diseased. Right, what's your deal, big guy? It hurts to look at you. You're here for the Dwemer boots. Tell my gracious keeper that I have done what I could. Only a Dwemer magecrafter could have done so much. 
but only idiots could have created these boots. It shames my race that we must be judged by the works of such lackwit blunderers. Once I was a master crafter in the service of Lord Kagernak, chief architect of the Second Empire Freeholds and the greatest enchanter of his time. I could not match the genius of Lord Kagernak, but what he could envision, I and my colleagues could build. All of that is gone forever. I shall retain my cunning, but my hands and eyes fail me, and my memories have long faded. My only consolation is each day to mock the gods who destroyed my race and condemned me to this bleak existence. Since the disappearance of the dwarves, I have been alone in this world, trapped in this grim prison. I can scarcely move, and my fellow inmates are scarcely good company. The risk of corpus disease deters most visitors, but if you meet with cultivated minds undaunted by the terrors of the corpusarium, you might mention your recent interview with the last living dwarf. We've found him, folks. The last dwarf in all of Tamriel, and he's succumbed to corpus. But he still seems quite cognizant. This is how I style myself. I do not know for a fact that I am the last, but in my travels thousands of years ago, I never encountered another. And since I have been here, I often ask Lord Fur, but he says he has never heard a credible rumour of another Dwemer on Tamriel or in any outer realm. You have to tell me more. What an isolated existence. His people are gone completely. What happened to you? Disappearance of the Dwarves. I cannot say what happened. I was not there to observe. I was in an outer realm at the time, and when I came back, my people were gone. By outer realm, he means like a plane of oblivion. Like, um, in, in the game Oblivion, uh, the Deadlands, Merun's Dagon's plane of oblivion, or the Shivering Isles, which are extra planar places, uh, extra dimensional places out with Tamriel, where the Deidre live. Molag Bal's realm of Cold Harbor as well, you might know if you played Skyrim. I left Red Mountain, wandering Tamriel for years, searching our deserted colonies, looking for a survivor or an explanation. Then, a long, long time ago, I returned to Red Mountain still looking for answers. Instead, I found corpus disease, and I have been here ever since. I have theories if you're interested. So he was a student of one of the best enchanters of the, the dwarves, who didn't believe in gods, they were an atheistic people. And now here he is, completely on his own. Isolated existence. Lord Kagernak, the foremost arcane philosopher and magecrafter of my era, devised tools to shape mythopaic forces intended to transcend the limits of Dwemer mortality. So this is what we heard, is that the Dwemer tried to make themselves like into a god. However, in reviewing his formulae, some logicians argued that side effects were unpredictable and errors might be catastrophic. I think Kaganak might have succeeded in granting our late race eternal life with unforeseen consequences, such as wholesale displacement to an outer realm, or he may have erred and utterly destroyed our race. So either using these tools that he had, he killed all the dwarves, or he transported them to another plane of existence. Now, can we help solve this mystery with the books that we've got here? This book is just an explanation of some of Kaganak's theories. I could spend hours explaining them to you, but Kaganak is dead and I believe his theories must die with him. The translation book is written in both Ald Medicine and Dwemer. Many books were written in both languages in the days of Resdian, uh, Morrowind's old name, when Dunmer and Dwemer ruled together peacefully. I'd offer to translate, but this is really just a boring travel guide. If you find any other books in Dwemer, I could translate them for you. I've also got this one. Um, wait, egg of time. By refreshing my memory with divine metaphysics, I believe I can explain. The Dwemer race were not unified in their thinking. Kagernak and his tonal architects, among them Befund Mizanak, believed they could improve the Dwemer race. Others argued that the attempt would be too great a risk. The war with Nerevar and the Dunmer may have led Kaganak to carry out his experiments prematurely. Although this book argues that nothing disastrous could result, the disappearance of my race argues otherwise. So now we've got a much better take on the story. So, 
I was able to get the Dwemer books, The Egg of Time and Divine Metaphysics, adapted to the meanest of intellects, translated. Divine Metaphysics seems to be a treatise explaining how to create a new god through sorcery. Let's take a look at it. This. This would be the new god. And what else? The Egg of Time seems to be a refutation of the idea that linking to a divine source of power can be dangerous if interrupted. Though the Egg of Time refutes this idea, perhaps the offer was wrong, and this is what happened to the dwarves. Let's have a look at Egg of Time again. Right. Kaganak needed tools to try and enhance the Dwimmer race. This is the Dwimmer. These are the tools. We don't know what this is, but the tools were used to work on this heart. And what happened to the Dwimmer when they worked on the heart? The Dwimmer disappeared. When Nerevar and the Great Houses fought the dwarves at Red Mountain as a last ditch effort, Kaganak used these tools on this heart and boom. All the Dwarven fighters were taken somewhere else. Nobody knows where, but they've gone somewhere. And that is the mystery of the Dwarves. Pretty much as solved as it can be. We can now return to Trebonius the Archmage who gave us this quest as a joke and actually say, by the way mate, we kinda have a good solid fairy for one of the biggest mysteries in all of Tamriel. With that, folks, I think I can say that I'm satisfied with this episode. Next episode, we will go back to Devaya Fur, hopefully cure our corpus disease, and then get into plundering this dungeon. Might also see if there's anything else I can talk to the last living dwarf about. He gave us those boots and just basically said that he couldn't fix them. But the information he gave us overall was far more insightful than that. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Enjoy your day, enjoy your week, enjoy the rest of your night. And as usual, make sure to check under your bed for an abomination like this.